Okay, in this video we want to look at the notion of a partition of a set. So let's recall what the power set of a given set is first. So given any set A, the power set of A, which we'll denote by the script P of A, is equal to the set containing all subsets of A. Good. So now, uh, for our definition, we'll say that P, which is a subset of the power set, so P contains some of the subsets of A, and we say that's a partition of A if we have the following. So the union of all of the subsets in this partition are the whole set. So I'll denote this by this union over all X in our um, set of subsets over X is equal to A. Okay. Good, and then if X and Y are in this P but they're not equal, then they intersect to the empty set. So this is important too. Okay, good, so let's look at some examples. So the first example I'll look at is really just hacked together. So let's take A to be the set one, two, three, four, five, six. And then let's take P, so we need it to be a set of subsets, so let's take it to be this set of subsets. So maybe the first one is the singleton 1, the second one is 2, 3, and 4, and then the third one is 5 and 6. So we've got those three subsets. And now notice, is this a partition? Yes, and that's because if you take this union this, union this, you get the whole set. And then also, if you intersect any of these that are not equal, you get the empty set, so they don't overlap at all. Okay, great, now the next one I want to look at is A equals the integers, and what we'll do here is we'll take our partition to be as follows. So this is going to be the set of subsets, and the first subset is given by 0, plus minus 3, plus minus 6, plus minus 9, and so on and so forth. The second one is given by minus 2, 1, 4, 7, 10, and so on and so forth. So in other words, all of these numbers have a remainder of 1 when divided by 3, all of these numbers have a remainder of 0 when divided by 3, and then finally we'll have negative 1, 2, oh yeah, and these go back in the other direction as well. Negative 1, 2, 5, um, 8, 11, and so on and so forth. So these all have a remainder of 2 when divided by 3. Now notice if we take the union of all of these, we definitely get all of the integers because when you divide any integer by 3, you'll either get a remainder of 0, 1, or 2. So if you've got a remainder of 0, you're up here, a remainder of 1, you're here, and a remainder of 2, you're down here. And then these also do not overlap because the notion of having a remainder when divided by is unique. So you can't have a remainder of 1 and a remainder of 2 simultaneously. So that means these guys uh, don't overlap at all. Um, okay, good. So the next thing I want to do is clean up the board and look at a really important result involving equivalence relations and partitions. Okay, so for the rest of this video we're going to look at this really important theorem. So it says there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between partitions of a set A and equivalence relations on a set A. So in other words, these are equivalent notions. A partition gives rise to an equivalence relation, so that means if we start with a partition, we can form an equivalence relation, and then vice versa. So if we start with an equivalence relation, then we can form a partition. So these are two sides of the same idea. Okay, great. So let's look at the proof. And how we'll do that proof is doing this construction. So let's first suppose we have a partition. So let's suppose P is a partition of our set A. Let's define a relation on A as follows. So define a relation 
R on A. So in other words, a subset of A cross A as um, A comma B is in R if and only if A comma B are in the same part of the partition of our set. So remember, the elements of the partition either are equal to each other or they intersect into the empty set. So what we're saying is A and B are related if and only if they, came, they come from the same part of the partition. Okay, good. So now the next thing we want to check is does this relation satisfy all of our rules before? In other words, reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. So let's first check those. So check that this is an equivalence relation. Okay, so the first thing we need to check is that A is related to itself, and we can do that pretty easily, and we'll say that A comma A is in R, and that is uh, because A is in X for some X in the partition, and again, that is because the union of all of those X's equal A. So in other words, since that union equals the whole set, we can find one element um, from the partition that contains our element A. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to check is symmetry. So let's suppose that A comma B um, is in R. Great. But now notice that's, that means that A comma B are in the same portion of the partition. But really, we can just write this in the other order and it has the same meaning. So A comma B being in the same portion of the partition, that's the same thing as B comma A being in the same portion of the partition, which is really the same thing as B comma A being uh, in our relation. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll look at the transitivity. Okay, so now for the transitivity portion of the equivalence relation. So that's uh, part three. So let's suppose that A comma B is in our relation and B comma C is in our relation. So what that tells us is that A comma B is in the same part of the partition P and B comma C are also in the same part of the partition P, but they may not be in the same part as A and B are. But now notice what that tells us is that B is an element of X intersect Y. But remember, if X and Y are not the same, then X intersect Y is the empty set. So what that tells us is that X equals the set Y. But now we can Put that into these two sentences and see that that arrives us at A comma C are in X. So A comma C are in the so A and C are in the same part of the partition, which tells us that A and C are related in our equivalence relation. Great, so what we've done so far is we've started with a partition and we've formed an equivalence relation. So now what we want to finish with is start with an equivalence relation and we'll form a partition. Okay, so now we want to start with an equivalence relation and form a partition. So let's suppose that R, which is a subset of A cross A, is an equivalence relation. And when we went over equivalence relations in the last video, we also went over the notion of an equivalence class. And that's going to be super important for this direction of the proof. And so let's set P equal to the following um, subset of the power set of A. So this is going to be equal to all of the equivalence classes under this equivalence relation. So we'll denote that as follows. So bracket A where A comes from A. So let's just recall over here that bracket A is equal to all elements B of our set A um, where A is related to B.
Good. So that's called the equivalence class of A. Great. So now uh, what we want to do is show that this actually forms a partition. So we can do that as follows. So let's suppose little a is in big A. And now notice, since we have an equivalence relation in the first place, that tells us that A comma A is in R. In other words, A is related to itself, but what that tells us is that A is in the equivalence class of A. Great, but that is in the union of all equivalence classes of A. And so this shows us that our set A is a subset of this union over all of the elements of our would-be partition. Great. And then since we started up here with only subsets of A in the first place, the opposite inclusion is obvious because we're just unioning subsets of A anyway. So what that tells us is that if we take a union over all elements of our would-be partition, we end up with our original set A, which was the first thing that we needed in order to have a partition. Okay, great, so there's one more thing that we need in order to have a partition, and I'll clean up the board and we will prove that. Okay, so we've just proved that if we union all of the elements of our would-be partition, we get the entire set. So now we wanna show that if we intersect any parts of the partition, we get the empty set or those parts were equal in the first place. So let's uh, take A and B in our set A, and remember the parts of the partition in this case were equivalence classes. So uh, let's consider the intersection of these two equivalence classes. Okay, great. So now let's suppose that we have an element X which is in the intersection of these two equivalence classes. So what this tells us is that X is in the equivalence class of A and X is in the equivalence class of B. But what that tells us is that A comma X is in our equivalence relation R. So in other words, A is related to X. And what this tells us is that B comma X is in our equivalence relation R. In other words, B is related to X. But now by transitivity, what this tells us is that A comma B is in R. In other words, A and B are related. So now what we can do is the following. So the equivalence class of A, so that is equal to all of Y in A, where A comma Y is uh, in our R, good, but now if Y is related to A and A is related to B, then this Y also has to be related to B, so that is going to be all Y in A such that B is related to Y by the transitivity property again, but that's exactly the way to define the equivalence class of B. Okay, so let's look over this proof again. So we took two elements from our would-be partition, the equivalence class of A and the equivalence class of B, and we considered their intersection. We showed that if their intersection is not empty, in other words, there is an element in the intersection of uh, equivalence class of A and equivalence class of B, then in fact what we get is that the two equivalence classes actually have to be the same equivalence class, which is the second component of being a partition of a set A. Good, so that finishes this proof.